Welcome everyone to a new video. This video is coming live to you from a 2011 MacBook Pro on which we're going to install macOS Ventura as an upgrade over this install of Big Sur, but the upgrade and reinstall process should be similar. First step is to actually download the OpenCore Legacy Patcher program which we'll use to create the installer, which can be found by just typing in Google OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Then go to the Dortania GitHub website there you can find the latest version and all of the patch notes. Click the Getting Started button in order to go to the appropriate page. Download and build macOS installer. And then uh, go to the uh, OpenCore Patcher Release apps. That will get you straight to GitHub where you can download the necessary assets. As of making this video, 067 is the latest version available. Scroll all the way down to Assets and get the Auto Package Assets PKG for the installer, or the OpenCore Patcher GUI app for just the regular application, and download it to your Downloads folder. Wait until it is done. Once the download is finished, go to your Downloads folder where you'll find the application. Make sure it is located in the Applications folder from where we will open it. Right-click and select Open because it is not a signed application. Once verified, click Open to proceed. Now go to Create macOS Installer. You can use an existing one if you already have it, or download to get a new one. It will pull the installer catalog from the website. Here you can pick Big Sur, Monterey, or Ventura as of making this video. Or click Show All Available Installers to view everything that you can get from there. We'll use the latest version in this tutorial, 13.4.1. This will proceed to download. It's 12 gigabytes, so it will take a while according to your, uh, to your internet speed. And we'll get back to you once it has finished. It'll go through a couple of extra steps once it has downloaded the installer. It will extract the installer files and then actually turn it into a usable app file. All in all, this can take up to a half an hour or more, depending on your computer. After extraction, the macOS installer is generated. Click Yes to create the macOS installer and select the appropriate version, in our case, macOS Ventura. Then select the drive you want to make bootable for the installation. This is your external drive. We'll select Disk 4 here. Yours might differ in name. You can just click this, confirm, click yes, and it will use this drive in order to erase it and make it a bootable macOS Ventura installer. The next step is creating an OpenCore patch drive. Click yes on this screen here. This will install all of the patches to your bootable USB and then proceed to install to disk for installation of OpenCore. OpenCore will uh, inject its code into your EFI partition on your main boot drive. So this should not be installed to the USB drive, but to your internal SATA drive. And from there we can uh, then proceed. Select your main boot drive here. In my case it is disk 0. And it will install the EFI bootable uh, code into there. Enter your password for root permissions. And it will proceed to patch your EFI partition as shown here. Once finished, you can click Reboot and it'll go straight to your OpenCore bootloader. Now read the boot picker, select your Ventura installer here and press Enter. It shall proceed to load the installation environment just like any other version of macOS. As shown here, that should look very familiar. Install macOS Ventura here and click Continue. It'll need some time to think in case of uh, the machine that was used for this particular video. And here we are. Click Continue again in order to go through the installation steps. If you don't have a formatted drive yet to install Ventura on, you should do that uh, before continuing here. And just format your drive as usual. Just give it some time to think about it. And uh, we should be pres uh, presented with the EULA very soon. And here we are at the EULA. Of course we have to agree. Agree to disagree, that is. Confirm again. Agree in order to continue. And here we can select a drive that we want to use. I'll use my Big Sur drive and continue from there. And uh, just let it sit there and uh, it'll take its sweet time to uh, do the first step of setup. After many reboots and all kinds of stuff, it should finally load into Ventura. Just select your Ventura drive again in the Open Core Legacy Patcher bootloader and just let it think about it. In case of this early 2011 machine, it uh, took some time to load but not excessively. Uh, but eventually you should be presented with the login screen from macOS. And here we are in macOS Ventura. 
You might have noticed there that uh, at the login screen we saw the Big Sur wallpaper. That's because this was a direct upgrade from Big Sur to Ventura. So that's also a good test to uh, show that uh, aspect there. But uh, the same applies to a clean install. The overall steps are more or less the same. The upgrade will have a couple of extra reboots to uh, update the system partitions and whatnot. But here we are at the desktop of macOS Ventura. Okay, let's get you zoomed in a little bit more. We have a 2.3 GHz dual core Intel i5, 13 inch 2011 MacBook Pro, 8 gigs of RAM, Intel HD 3000 graphics, and of course, 13.4.1 Ventura. We can go into the system profiler as soon as it wants to load. We, it is still optimizing the system, so it will be a bit slower and cooking itself to death uh, in case of this particular unit. We have a MacBook Pro 8.1, that is the 2011. The reason it can take a while on machines like this is because it only has USB 2.0. The 2012 MacBook Pro does have USB 3, this one does not, so it will take a while for it to install. But everything should be working. If we go to graphics and displays, it should detect your HD 3000. And uh, it's working correctly. That concludes the installation of macOS Ventura using the OpenCore Legacy Patcher, which makes it very easy indeed to install a clean uh, new macOS version as well as upgrade an older one. Uh, on a Mac that is not designed to run this version in the first place. Hope you enjoyed it. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.